This blue marble-like planet looks just like Earth, but only 5 seconds on this hostile death orb would kill you. Welcome to HD 189733b. This planet is enormous, even larger than Jupiter, and to keep comparing it to the largest planet in our solar system, it's also entirely made of gas. That's why scientists classify HD 189733b as a hot Jupiter. This planet is located so close to its star that it completes its orbit in just over two days. Yeah, HD 189733b is 13 times closer to its sun than Mercury is to our sun, and even though its star is cooler than ours, this fake Earth is still way outside its star system's habitable zone. That means no liquid water can exist on a planet's surface. Just how this giant gas planet developed so close to a star is still a mystery. One theory is that HD 189733b formed right next to it during the star's earliest moments, or it could have developed further away to be pulled in as the rest of the planetary system formed. But there's one thing we know for sure a visit to HD 189733b would be a plunge into hell with no chance of escape. Now, even if you knew there wasn't a single drop of liquid water on this planet, you'd have a hard time believing it as you approached the giant blue marble with an average daytime temperature of nearly 1000 degrees Celsius. This planet is twice as hot as Venus, and Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. One of the reasons for this intense heat is that the planet is tidally locked to its star, just like our own moon is to Earth. That means HD 189733b takes as much time to spin on its axis as it does to revolve around the star. So, one side of the planet is constantly in dating light, while the other side is shrouded in darkness. The inviting look of this world doesn't come from its oceans like it does here on Earth. No, this hellish planet gets its color from clouds of molten silica particles. These particles scatter more blue light than red, making the planet appear blue. Silica is the primary ingredient in glass, and you should bring a heavy-duty umbrella because you'd need to take cover from what would essentially be hot molten glass rainstorms. But that's not the only danger you'd need to be ready to brace yourself against. The extremely powerful winds that you'd find sweeping across the planet with speeds up to 7,000 km per hour. These gusts are almost 30 times stronger than even the most powerful Category 5 hurricanes on Earth. Compared to the strongest winds on other planets in our solar system, HD's winds are almost four times stronger than those on Neptune. But hey, they might smell a little better than the ice giant's hydrogen sulfide clouds. Those carry a whiff of rotten eggs. HD's winds are so fast that they'd whip past you at about six times faster than the speed of sound. They would be extremely loud, but I think you'd be more worried about them tearing your body apart. You might be long gone by now killed by that molten glass rain. In any case, you wouldn't last too long on HD 189733b. I really don't recommend traveling there, but there are some planets out there that can kill you even faster. Check out OGLE T56b. This gas giant sits in a galaxy nearly 100 light years away from Earth. It's even larger than HD. Its mass is nearly 1.4 times as much as Jupiter's, and somehow it's even closer to its star too. You'd find this world to be incredibly scorching hot. Surface temperatures on this planet average around 1,700 degrees Celsius. That's so hot that it turns metal to gas. Of all the planets in the universe, Earth is clearly the best for life, right? Wrong. Earth may be great, but scientists have discovered a few worlds that could be even better for life. Behold, K2-5715.01. Most of the contenders on our superhabitable planet list aren't the ones you could visit anytime soon. They are very far away. The top spot is held by one 3,000 light years away from our solar system. K2-5751 would appear to satisfy the most basic requirement for supporting life. It exists in the Goldilocks zone of its star, so conditions wouldn't be too hot or too cold for a key life-supporting ingredient to exist on its surface, liquid water. But it would also check off many boxes to be considered superhabitable. The planetary system it belongs to could be 5.2 billion years old, which would make it around 1 billion years older than our own solar system. And the planet would almost fit the size requirement. 
When looking for superhabitable worlds, scientists keep their eyes peeled for planets that have a mass up to one and one half times of our planet, and they should be about 10% larger too. This size difference would help the planet retain heat, and if its average temperature was about 5 degrees Celsius higher than Earth's, well, this planet could have even richer biodiversity. Now, being almost double the size of Earth, K2-5751.01, well, we're just getting started. Approximately 2,700 light-years away is Kepler-69c. This super-Earth could be around 7 billion years old. This puts it perfectly in the estimated 5 to 8 billion year old age range for superhabitable planets. This range is based on the 3.5 billion years it took for complex life to appear on Earth. So, the best chance for finding life could be on a planet a little older than us. Only this exoplanet could be a little too big to be superhabitable. It has a mass almost four times that of Earth. A rocky planet this big could have a single colossal continent that would have huge deserts in its center. But the superhabitable coastline washed by Kepler's ocean could be your perfect spot to move to. Our next super Earth shares a similar name, Kepler 1126b, except it would be located ever so slightly closer to home. Yeah, this planet is about 273 light years away, and it belongs to a system that is 7 and 82 billion years old. It also orbits a yellow dwarf star, much like our own, only Kepler 1126b is two and a half times closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. But that's no big deal because the star Kepler 1126b orbits is cooler than ours. So, the habitable zone would exist in a range much closer in proximity to it. If you aren't feeling this nearness to a scorching hot star, there's another super Earth on our list, and it's at a reasonable distance from home. Speculo 2c is located only 106 light years away. Not that its proximity gives it any kind of advantage. It would still take you well over 2,000 years to travel to this super Earth, and that's if you moved at the speed of NASA's Parker Solar Probe, the fastest probe ever launched. Speculo 2c does look promising, though. It's about 40% larger than Earth. There's also the potential for it being a rocky planet just like ours. Now, despite the fact that it also exists in the habitable zone, its red dwarf star is still very small. It's only about 15% the size of our sun. So, this planet orbits around its star at a very close distance. And this close distance could mean that Speculo 2c is tidally locked to its star. This super-Earth takes eight and a half days to make one full rotation on its axis, as well as one orbit around its star. That would leave one side of the planet in constant daylight and the other in endless night. This means that life could be possible in the Terminator zone, the thin strip of land between the two sides. We just need to get a better look to find out for sure. You know, of all those planets, I'd be most interested in exploring Speculo 2C. I imagine it smells like gingerbread and cinnamon and it tastes delicious. My Belgian friends know Speculo is a famous cookie originating in Belgium but this planet wasn't named after the cookie. It's actually named by Belgian astronomers after the Speculo Planet Hunting Telescopes. In this case, Speculo is an acronym for search for habitable Kepler 1126b planets eclipsing ultra-cool stars. Okay, more great space discoveries ahead, including a look at the Bermuda Triangle of Space. But first, I've got something even scarier than that, the closest black hole to Earth. At least that we know of. Black holes are dark matter-devouring balls of gravity. Most of them are so far away that we don't need to worry about them. But not this one. Meet Gaia BH1. This enormous black hole sits right outside our solar system, more specifically 1,600 light-years away from us. Now, that might sound like a huge distance, but it's way closer than any other black hole on record. What's worse, we didn't even know about it until now. Despite Gaia BH1 being 10 times more massive than our Sun, we couldn't see it. Scientists usually discover these monstrosities by spotting the gas that a black hole feeds on. These hungry giants are called feeding black holes. Only, Gaia BH1 isn't anything like that. This black hole is dormant. It hides in the darkness, patiently waiting for the galaxy to throw it some cosmic matter to feast on. But there's one thing that gave away Gaia's presence. 
You see, most star systems in the universe are binary. That means they have not one, but two stars orbiting each other. Our black hole neighbor is also part of a binary star system, except instead of two stars, this system has one star and one black hole. Yeah, Gaia BH1 was disguising itself as a star. But even though this monstrosity doesn't feed on any gas or matter yet, it still couldn't help but jiggle its star counterpart a little. Yeah, good try, Gaia, but we still caught you out there. In space, there are black holes a lot scarier than Gaia H1, and some are so bizarre that they shouldn't even exist. A team of scientists discovered an unbelievable black hole and gave it the melodic name Pound 1. The weird thing about this black hole is that it's just too massive to be true. Okay, let's get some facts straight. We know of two types of black holes. Stellar black holes are what massive stars become when they die. They're everywhere in the universe, even in our Milky Way galaxy. There could be as many as one billion of them lurking around. These beasts can be between 10 and 24 times as massive as our sun. The other type of black holes are supermassive ones. These enormities sit at the center of almost every galaxy, including our own. We don't really know how they form, but we do know that they're unimaginably gigantic, billions of times more massive than our sun. But pound one doesn't fit either of these types. At 70 solar masses, it's too enormous to be a stellar black hole. Yet it's too tiny to be a supermassive one. Scientists were scratching their heads, trying to explain this phenomenon. Some theorize that it might not be a single black hole but two black holes orbiting each other. Others guessed that Pound 1 was born of a gigantic star that was still in the middle of becoming a black hole. Well, the answer was simpler than we thought. Pound 1 isn't a black hole at all. It's an optical illusion caused by two rare star stars orbiting each other. It's a unique star system to stargaze. But when scientists said they found an improbable black hole, well, they were wrong. But please, how could you blame them? It's pretty hard to study an object 15,000 light years away. Mistakes happen. The good news is that Pound 1 didn't upend our understanding of black holes after all. Now, that doesn't mean that black holes can't blow your mind. Remember the one at the center of the Milky Way? Yeah, it's called Sagittarius A star, and it's as massive as four and two million suns. But there's always a bigger fish in the universe. Sagittarius A star might be the most massive monster lurking in our galaxy, but it's not even close to some of the really big players out there, like Tun 618. This black hole is devouring matter 10 billion light years away from us. It's as bright as 140 trillion suns. So bright that it outshines its own galaxy. And its mass? Yeah, 66 billion times that of our sun. Yeah, that's right, 66 billion. Tun 618 is horrifyingly big. When scientists discovered it, they began to wonder if even more massive black holes were possible. Of course, the name supermassive wouldn't do bigger black holes any justice. So astronomers came up with a cool name for them too, stupendously large black holes, or slabs. And then they found one. Move over, Tun 618, there's a new gargantuan black hole in town. This stupendously large monstrosity sits at the center of Phoenix A galaxy, around 8 and 82 billion light years away from us. It's almost impossible to imagine how enormous this thing is. Scientists think it has a mass of 100 billion suns. That's more massive than some galaxies out there. And it won't stop growing. The event horizon of this black hole at the center of Phoenix A is unimaginably huge too. It has a diameter of about 100 times the distance between the Sun and Pluto. If you jumped on a SpaceX starship and tried to fly across this black hole, it would take you 2,500 years to complete that journey. Yeah, we're lucky that this monstrous slab is so far away from us that we don't have to worry about it swallowing our solar system whole. But there are two more supermassive black holes very close to Earth, and they're on a collision course with each other. Okay, when I say very close to Earth, I mean 500 million light years away from us. But still closer than a lot of the other scary things out there. Seriously though, we don't know what exactly happens when two supermassive black holes collide. 
we've never observed a full merger of supermassive giants. Scientists think that they'll dance around each other for about 200 million years before finally becoming one. But this would be a violent marriage. As the black holes spiral together, they'll send enormous gravitational waves through space, waves so big that we'll be able to detect them from our planetary neighborhood. But that's not the scary part. Mergers like that happen all the time, and right now, the Milky Way is on a collision course with the Andromeda Galaxy. When our two galaxies become one, what will happen to the supermassive black holes at their centers? Will they merge too? Would an event like this tear everything in its vicinity to shreds? Yeah, I bet that's what keeps astronomers up at night. Just north of the Martian equator lies a 45 kilometers wide impact crater that scientists believe may have been the site of an ancient lake. Here at Jezero Crater, scientists theorize that its frozen soil may contain the most significant discovery of humankind, life on February 18, 2021, NASA's Perseverance rover started searching this crater to find out if we're truly alone. What is the likelihood of life on Mars? What would these Martians look like? And how will we send samples back to Earth? Thanks for watching.